The challenge is that as we age, that thirst drive actually decreases. If you're not thirsty, you're not sensing that you're thirsty, you can also monitor how much urine you're putting out on a daily basis, the frequency of going to the washroom, as well as the volume. With respect to seniors care, there has been some research to show why individuals who are living in these environments, so long-term care homes, assisted living retirement homes, might be eat, drinking less than, than we would want them to drink. The older ads could forget how to drink or forget that they need to drink. They might have a swelling problem that limits what they can drink in terms of fluid um, might be thickening or re versus a regular fluid. They might be what we call sippers, People just take a very small volume of fluid. They have physical challenges with uh, eating or drinking. They may be afraid of incontinence and they might also be at the end of life. So again, this is based on research that has been, just been done in seniors care, typically long-term care homes. So access with respect to uh, a reason why someone might not be drinking enough, we can think about in a uh, seniors care environment to make sure we offer fluids frequently. So having, for example, a trolley that, uh, that brings your own drinks to people in, their, in the environment. You could also have hydration stations. So places where there's uh, a jug of water, for example, and glasses that someone can use. Carrying a water ball around is another way to improve your access to fluid or having a cup of tea with you when you have that tickle in your throat. Also making it a habit because people that forget to drink, um, we need to think about how we can build it into the day so it's automatic. So we could pair it up with a routine. Think about when you get up in the morning, if you had a glass of water or a jug of water beside your bed, that might stimulate you to drink. When you take your medications, take a full glass of water rather than a small amount. Offer a drink with some key routines. For example, if you're going out for um, a walk, um, offering a drink to other folks that are there so they make sure they're hydrated is a way to make it a habit and they think about drinking when they're doing that specific activity. Drinking with others as well as a way to make it a habit. Going down for coffee, for example, on a daily basis and drinking with others. There's something called mimicry that's been studied as well, specific to persons living with dementia. We know that older adults with dementia may have specific eating challenges. And we know that if we have someone drinking in front of them, they're more likely to also pick up their cup and drink as well. You might have actually seen this with yourself as well when you're on virtual environments such as this or in other company. When someone touches a cup or picks up a, a food item, they're more likely, the other person is also more likely to eat and drink. Finally, using things like preferred cups that allow people to feel comfortable when they're drinking is key. There's often a lack of awareness, as I noted already, about how much we should be drinking. So education is important for not only older adults, but their family mothers, members and those that care for them. And use your reminders again, like having a glass by the bedside with water in it. So when you get up in the morning, first thing, sitting on the side of the bed, you can have a glass of water. If people ignore their thirst signals, what's key is to learn those cues. Uh, we often just are overriding them, if you will, ignoring them. But also you can make drinking a habit. So basically, basically not waiting to feel thirsty to drink. Pair drinking with other routines again, such as meals, maybe having a glass of water before the meal happens, maybe a half an hour before the meal or with your medications. For those people that avoid urination or fear incontinence, again, education on the importance of hydration, why we need to drink enough, and provide and plan for washroom access. Physical challenges, think about easy to handle cups, maybe perhaps using straws to support people drinking from a glass, and then providing eating, drink, eating and drinking assistance to support that individual will be important. If a person has a swelling problem, Identify those preferred thickened fluids and high fluid foods that they can consume that can support their hydration. And finally, those people that are sippers, they just naturally consume a small volume of fluid, have them drinking with others, carry a water ball around and make a goal for how much they will drink during the day, or focus on preferred beverages, things they like to drink.
We've also looked at what vessels might be preferred by older adults. We found that things that are lightweight, easy to handle, a large enough um, uh, uh, handle here on the cup so you can put three fingers in, that's ideal. And people like that sort of vessel to drink from.